Hello everyone. I am very pleased to kick off this new lecture series on adaptive control and learning. I have been working on adaptive control more than a decade right now. Uh, my PhD is on adaptive control and as a professor, I had a chance to work on adaptive control research uh, with a lot of agencies. National Science Foundation, NASA, Air Force, DARPA, um, to name but a few examples. And I had a chance um, to implement adaptive control on many exciting systems, including NASA AirStar and many other vehicles. And I wanted to make a new lecture series on adaptive control and learning theory. And this is kind of the introduction video. Um, but I want you to well understand why we care about adaptive control. So that's the purpose of this video. To begin with, without an exception, this is a very important sentence, a very important beginning. Without an exception, every physical system is subject to disturbances and or uncertainties. You can take a quadcopter or a multi-rotor system as an example, it is subject to winds, turbulence. You can take a um, robotic arm, ground robot, it is subject to friction. Or let's say you are linearizing a system around an equilibrium point. When you deviate from that equilibrium point, your system will be subject to uh, uncertainties uh, resulting from this linearization process. Or simply, you may have unknown parameters in the system, or you may incorrectly estimate some parameters. Or let's say you are doing an operation, um, your um, actuator is subject to icing, or let's say you have a structural damage, your system may, sub may be subject to degraded modes of operation. And simply forget about everything you assumed, <clears throat> you ignored electronics, you ignored some um, moment of inertia, some changes in mass based on some idealized assumptions, all of them acting as your system as disturbances and or uncertainties. While these disturbances are, uh, and uncertainties most of the time negatively impact the desired stability and performance of your physical system in control. So you need to deal with them. I would like to give you the world's one of the simplest examples to understand uh, uncertainties, how they pop up. I would like to consider mass spring damper system. We have a card here with mass M we have a spring with constant alpha and damper with constant beta. And P is the position of this card. U is the applied control signal. And let's say we would like to design a form of control algorithm, not necessarily adaptive. Now, <coughs> I apologize for my voice. <coughs> so first of all, when you model that system, um, let's say you are using free body diagram, right? These forces resulting from spring and damper negatively affect your mass and your control signal will contribute, will make the, your system move along this um, P uh, meters. Now, if you look at Newton's second law, which is nothing but MA equals to the applied sum of applied forces, we have control force and this negative force due to the um, spring, another negative force due to the damper, <coughs> and this is your MA. Now, <coughs> uh, you need to represent this system in state space. For this, let's call X1 as P, second state as P dot, then X1 dot becomes P dot, which is x2, 
right x1 that equals p dot but p dot is x2 you have this so this is the first state x2 dot is nothing but p dot dot and p dot dot is here basically take this m put it here 1 over m to the right hand side and replace p with x1 p dot with x2 because this is what we defined then you arrive this equation now if you know mass alpha and beta let's say you know everything about that system then resulting state space will have this a matrix and b matrix and if you know everything then you can use um, any method for um, feedback purposes now let's say the, let's consider a worst case scenario let's say you don't know mass alpha and beta you know nothing about your system then we move basically these unknown parameters outside our state space in the following sense that i highlight here first of all i empty my a matrix i move these uncertain parameters like this outside here w is basically unknown weight w stands for weight and here i emptied b matrix i moved lambda 1 over m outside so this lambda basically is called um, unknown control effectiveness matrix matrix in this case it's a scalar but in general it can be matrix and w as i mentioned is nothing but unknown weight this particular parameterization will be important later i don't want you to remember this um, for the following videos but the point that i am i am trying to make now since nothing is known about this system i need to live with this a and b matrices and somehow i need to design the control signal to suppress or cancel the effect of lambda uncertainty and w uncertainty and of course you can have let's say mass is known alpha beta unknown you can have um, something between these systems so we need to parameterize basically you could you need to include the known uh, parameters of the system inside these and leave others outside all right let's move forward so we have this unknown system to deal with um, we have in control theory two common approaches one of them is robust control method and the other one is adaptive control method both methods are well established and well respected methods in dealing with uncertainties in systems i would like to compare them and this will be a honest comparison comparison first of all with robust control the resulting control um, algorithm will have fixed parameters they will be fixed however in adaptive control the, the resulting parameters of the controller will change in real time in robust control one more time when we tune control parameters we tune to a worst case scenario which may never happen in practice on the other hand with adaptive control we don't basically tune to a worst case scenario basically we let the control parameters change in real time to adapt to the changes in the physical system we learn from the basically we learn uncertainties and cancel their effect in real time and to design robust control methods we need to know upper bounds and lower bounds on system uncertainties or the um, basically um, this w for example and lambda terms on the other hand adaptive control we do not necessarily adaptive control architectures do not necessarily excessively rely on models or these bounds and in robust control basically if we trade off performance versus uncertainty um, this means that if basically you have <clears throat> a lot of uncertainty 
it, it, it is very hard to achieve a desired level of system performance. However, adaptive control with proper learning, no such, there is no such a trade-off. And I would like to emphasize here proper learning. Well, if you use most of the adaptive controls from textbooks, their performance will be unpredictable. And um, this is one of the key reasons some people, especially who has less understanding of adaptive control methods um, may diverge from using the adaptive control architectures. However, when you really understand the phenomena, really understand what's going on and really understand how to well tune and well structure the proper learning algorithm for adaptive controllers, you will see that they are way to go. Okay. And robust control methods are generally linear. And since they are linear, they are, their properties are well understood or, you know, over the entire literature. However, with adaptive control, they basically adaptive control alg algorithms are inherently nonlinear. And because of their nonlinear stru structure, sometimes people are scared of them. And because of the nonlinear structures, their properties are, are not very well understood. Now, good news for you, based on my extensive experience, applications of adaptive control and learning theory, in this new lecture series, I will teach you all the important stuff, and I mean it, all the important stuff to understand adaptive control. You are at learning algorithms. You are going to understand. You are going to understand different types. You are going to understand uncertainty types and how to design properly um, these learning algorithms. And um, my vision for this new lecture series on adaptive control and learning is that this will be the best, absolutely the best lecture series in the YouTube in terms of I will put my all knowledge in adaptive control. All right, what about the textbooks or some references? Um, on the left, um, th this is a great book uh, written by Boeing researchers, Eugene Lavreski and Kevin Weiss. Uh, in fact, Eugene Lavreski was one of my committee members during my PhD defense, and um, I really respect his knowledge. Likewise, Kevin Weiss, I am uh, acting together on different technical committees of IAA and IEEE. And I, if I recommend a book, I would recommend this book on adaptive control, it covers the material um, in a well-rounded shape. And to make a brief introduction or a jumpstart to adaptive control, I would like to recommend my um, Wiley Encyclopedia of Electrical and Electronics Engineering article published in 2019, um, so-called model reference adaptive control. Um, you will, this is not a survey paper or it is not intended to be a survey paper, but I try to cover the state of the art as of 2019. Um, of course, learning theory and adaptive control is a very dynamic field. And right now we are in uh, 2023, a lot of stuff going on. But in these videos, I will try to capture all the basics, textbook level adaptive control and the state of the art. So... What do you, what you should learn before watching these new lecture series on adaptive control and learning? Well, if you know um, linear control systems well with an understanding of Lupino uh, theory, you should uh, start watching the following videos that I will upload. If you want to refresh your knowledge I will strongly recommend that go to my YouTube web page, click to playlists, find the playlist on lectures or on advanced control systems. I strongly recommend that you watch all the videos. These are basically short videos. And I try to convey my knowledge on important topics. But if you are under time pressure and you, you know, you can, you ask, well, which videos should I watch first? Then I would recommend watch from the modeling part, watch state space presentations. In fact, when I was discussing uh, um, 
Supreme Mass Damper system in the following, like a couple of minutes ago, I basically used a state space representation. From the stability part, you need to watch Lupono stability and more and eigenvalues and more. These are pretty important videos. And from the control part, you should watch state and output feedback of uh, output feedback. It should be here control of linear systems, pole eigenvalue placement, optimal linear quadratic control, and model reference adaptive control. So basically, I have an adaptive control video there already, but it is short. <clears throat> and, you know, the purpose of these lecture series is to dive into the detail. I am not going to stay at the textbook level. I will dive into detail and share all my experience, based on my experience, all the basically how we design adaptive controllers, learning algorithms. What do we mean by learning adaptation it, at first place? And you will have a deep understanding of adaptive control theory and learning. And if you have any issues about vectors and matrices, well, I strongly recommend that you also watch these videos, vector operations and mat mat matrix operations. I am always honest with you. Well, these videos, you, you may think, you know, watching them, it is just abstract mathematics, vector and matrix operations. It may be a little bit boring, but in the long term, if you know them, uh, this will be very important for your knowledge and understanding, not only um, adaptive control lectures, but also any other um, advanced controls material. So, um, once again, I am happy to kick off this new um, lecture series on adaptive control and learning. Stay tuned, new videos will come. Thanks for watching the very first video.